Sutra. When the nature of their consciousness does not move within extinction, they exhaustively investigate. Within the endless, they discern the end of the nature. It is as if it were there and yet not there, as if it were ended and yet not ended. There among those at the station of neither thought nor non thought. Commentary This is the heaven of neither thought nor non thought, the highest of the heavens. The lifespan of these heavenly beings is 80,000 great aeons. However, after enjoying that long period of heavenly blessings, they too fall back into rebirth. In the heaven of the station of boundless consciousness, the consciousness still functions occasionally, but now it doesn't move at all. When the nature of their consciousness does not move, within extinction they exhaustively investigate. Ultimately, even investigation and all other forms of pursuing knowledge come to an end. Within the endless, they discern the end of the nature. The endless refers to the absence of anything, as just described. Within it, they discern the end of the nature, which is endless. When they discern this nature, however, it is as if it were there and yet not there as if it were ended and yet not ended. It seems to be gone, but it isn't. They are among those at the station of neither thought nor non-thought. There is a bit of thought left, but at this station it does not function. They remain in Samadhi for 80,000 great ends. They are the gods of, with the longest lifespan. People who cultivate the way should not give rise to thoughts. Once your mind is set in motion and thoughts arise, you will be stuck with the retribution in the future. You'll have to work it off. For example, there was an old cultivator in the past who cultivated the samadhi of neither thought nor non-thought, and he could probably have entered the heaven of the station of neither thought nor non-thought. One day, he, as he was cultivating by the seashore and was just on the verge of entering somebody, a fish in the water disturbed him in the churn hole. People who are incessant talkers are dubbed machine guns. They are always able to think up reason to interrupt others with questions and discussions with disturbed to home. So the whole to create disturbances is to be a pest who gives other people trouble. In this case, it was a fish that created the disturbance. He flipped out of the water with a plunk, and that little feat of acrobatics prevented the cultivator from entering somebody. Unable to enter somebody, the cultivator not angry, and he got angry, and he thought, what a nuisance that fish is. I want to enter somebody and he becomes to trouble me. I don't have any spiritual penetrations yet, but when I get them, I'm going to come back as a kingfisher and eat his species up. That's what he'll get for obstructing my practice. Of course, since he was so angry, the fish didn't dare play around with him anymore. It was scared away. Left undisturbed, the cultivator accomplished his cultivation and was born in the heaven of the station of neither thought nor non-thought. However, after he enjoyed 80,000 great ends of residence in that heaven, guess what happened? The retribution came ripe from that one thought of anger he'd had by the seashore that day. He fell into the animal realm and was born as a kingfisher. His entire existence consists of eating fish from the sea. This continued until Shakyamuni Buddha came into the world and came to where he was to speak the Dharma for him. Only then was he able to relinquish the body of a kingfisher and become a person. He once again left the home life and cultivated the way and this time he was certified to the fusion of Ahatshu. Whatever you do in cultivation of the way, then don't get angry. Whether people are good to you or not, you should maintain thoughts of loving kindness for them. 
thoughts of compassion and protection. Don't feel hatred toward anyone. Don't be upset by them. It won't be a problem if you perfect your cultivation and transcend the triple world. But if you remain in the triple world, you have you will have to undergo retribution for your hatred. There's a saying that is appropriate here. You can move the waters of a thousand rivers, but you can't disturb the mind of a cultivator of the way. To disturb a cultivator and cause him to get angry is a serious matter and will cause any effect will repent in the future. Sutra, these beings who delve exhaustively into emptiness but never fathom the principle of emptiness, go from the heaven of no return down this road which is dead and to sagehood. They are among those known as down ahas who do not turn their minds around, just like those in the heaven of no thought and the heavens of ex uh, externalists who become engrossed in emptiness and do not want to come back. These beings are confused, prone to our flaws and ignorant. They will accordingly enter the cycle of rebirth again. Commentary These beings who delve exhaustively into emptiness but never fathom the principle of emptiness. Go from the heaven of no return down this road which is a dead end to sage root. You'll remember that at the summit of the form realm, the road is forked. One path that leads to the great hearts who turn their minds around. Now, we've come to the end of the road which the other folk leads to the hearts who do not turn their minds around. They never fathom the principle of emptiness entirely. They have cultivated, but they don't really understand. They don't have any genuine wisdom. They are among those known as down ahas who do not turn their minds around. They don't have the wisdom of sages. They don't turn from the small and go toward the great. The home means stupid and downwitted, just like those in the heaven of no thought and the heavens of externalists who become engrossed in emptiness and do not want to come back. These beings are confused, prone to our flaws and ignorant. The beings in those heavens and the ones who pass through the four stations of emptiness and wind up at this dead end all become attached to emptiness and don't know how to return to cultivate the way to body. They end up confused and stupid. They will accordingly enter the cycle of rebirth again. In cultivation, you must keep yourself in line and not go down the wrong road. Sutra, Ananda, each and every being in all these heavens is ordinary. They are still answerable for their karmic retribution. When they have an answered for their debts, they must once again enter rebirth. The laws of these heavens, however, are all bodhisattvas who run in samadhi. Then gradually progress in their practice and make transferences to the way cultivated by all sages. Commentary Ananda, each and every being in all these heavens is ordinary. You shouldn't think that they have succeeded in their consideration. They are all still ordinary beings. They have not been certified to the fusion of sage root. They are still answerable for their karmic retribution. Despite their long lifespans, they still must go off to repay the debts when their karma catches up with them. When they have answered for their death, they must once again enter rebirth. The laws of these heavens, however, are all bodhisattvas. They are transformation body bodhisattvas who run in, who run in samadhi. They gradually progress in their practice and make transferences to the way cultivated by all sages. They make transference to body, the enlightened way. They are certified to the fortune of and join the family of sages. The way they cultivate is the same that is cultivated by all the sages. Sutra, Ananda, these are the four heavens of emptiness where the bodies and minds of the inhabitants are extinguished. The nature of concentration emerges and they are free of the karmic retribution of form. This final group is called the formless realm. 
Commentary Ananda, these are the four heavens of emptiness. They are the heaven of the station of boundless emptiness, the heaven of the station of boundless consciousness, the heaven of the station of nothing whatsoever, the heaven of neither thought nor non thought. This is where the bodies and minds of the inhabitants are extinguished. The nature of concentration emerges and they are free of the karmic retribution of form. They don't have physical bodies and they have no minds other than the consciousness which does not move. The nature of their samadhi power becomes evident. They are free of the karmic retribution of form. They don't have to go through that in these heavens. This final group is called the formless realm. This is the end of life in the three realms. The four stations of emptiness are the heavens of the formless realm. They are the last of the heavens. Sutra, the beings of, in all of them have not understood the wonderful enlightenment of the bright mind. Their accumulation of falseness brings into being false existence in the three realms. Within them, they falsely follow along and become submerged in their seven destinies. As the Padgalas, they gather together with their own species or kind. Commentary The beings throughout the three realms just described have not understood the wonderful enlightenment of the bright mind. They don't have the wisdom to understand and become enlightened. Their accumulation of falseness brings into being false existence in the three realms. From the one truth, falseness arises. Ignorance is produced in the nature of wonderful true suchness. The three realms are created by living beings themselves. Once within them, they falsely follow along and become submerged in the seven destinies. They usually speak of the cycle of rebirth in the six paths, but here the text mentions seven. That's because the path of the immortals is, is included here. Having been discussed earlier in the sutra, the seven are gods, asuras, immortals, people, animals, hungry ghosts, hell dwellers. They bob up and down, suddenly getting reborn in their heavens and then falling again into their hells. They go from being people to being hungry ghosts. That's what's meant by submerged. As the Padgalas, they gather together with their own species or kite. Padgala is a Sanskrit word that means sentient beings. Gathering together with their own kite means that they undergo retribution for whatever kind of karma they have created. If they are immortals, they gather together with that kite. If their reward is the heavens, then they gather together with other gods. If they are destined to be asuras, they get together with other asuras. The same applies to the other destinies.